guys, this is Curtis from Grand Patina. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I know we've been a little bit uh, spotty with some of the video coverage that we've been doing, but uh, we promise uh, we're going to be showcasing more uh, footage and photography of uh, the watches that we're getting in. And uh, I'm kind of excited because every week what we're going to do is kind of showcase what's new, what's coming in, what we're picking up, and why we're picking up these watches. Um, so let's just jump right in. Uh, one of the cool uh, watches that we've uh, recently acquired, and this is kind of rare to have two versions of this. We have uh, a 16758 from 1984, and uh, this is a black version, a black dial with a black insert. And we actually just picked up this, which came in uh, a couple days ago, and it is certainly a beauty. It's um, a 1980... Uh, root beer 16758 GMT. So the watches couldn't look, uh, you know, any possibly more different, just simply just due to the colors. But um, they wear and, and the pricing is kind of different for the two. Uh, we're seeing a huge premium for the root beer models. And this is one of those things where maybe a couple years ago, you didn't have that much of a root beer uh, following. When I say root beer, I just mean brown dial typically a two-tone insert or all-brown insert. And um, what's great about these 16758s, especially the ones with nipple dials, is you get some crazy oxidation, crazy patina, tropicalness, if you want to call it that, uh, over the years. So these you can find typically in the very, very late 70s, early 80s to mid 80s. And we're seeing maybe about a 15% price difference or price variation between the black dials and root beer dials. Personally, for me, I'm partial to the root beer. I love these brown tones. I love the, the warmer uh, colors and the crazy tropicalness that the root beers tend to have. But uh, I certainly wouldn't pass up a, a nice, clean black dial GMT uh, with nipple dials. Uh, this one is from 1984. It's actually my birth year. And uh, has a really cool fat font black uh, GMT insert, um, and even worn on a green NATO strap with gold hardware. For whatever reason, um, I think most people associate uh, gold Rolexes with a lot of stomminess, but um, you know, you can wear it with jeans, you can wear it with dress pants, and especially on a leather strap, not doing a full gold uh, bracelet, it feels very still blue collar. It feels like the way I look at it is if you're wearing a nipple dial GMT, you either inherited it or you sought it out. You didn't happen to get one by accident or you didn't walk past the shop and say, ah, oh, this looks kind of good. And it is definitely a watch that has a lot of intention. Um, and I certainly never met anyone that did not uh, fall in e either of those two categories. Um, so this one's from 1984, this black dial GMT 16758. And then you have this, uh, this is the root beer that I was talking about. And it's kind of got this, what I think what they call it is a tiger eye dial. And um, there's a few different variations of uh, nipple dials, some with applied uh, logos or applied um, coronet. And uh, this one is actually printed coronet with the, the nipple uh, dial. And it's a tritium dial as well. This one is a little bit earlier from 1980. It's got a matching bracelet with it. And uh, just some really cool engravings that um, are on the case back. I believe it's a MHM. So whoever's initials those were. Um, what you also find on these older gold Rolexes is that typically just around the, the crown guards, it's usually has this patina, this rosy copperish patina. I'm not sure if it's just because of the oils over the years saturating uh, specifically near the crown guards, but it's, I wouldn't say it's rose gold, but it's definitely got some cool patina that goes along with just a, a heavy flashy gold watch. Um, and I think that's what makes this feel a little bit more utilitarian. It's not bright, it's not flashy uh, in that sense of what you think of when you're thinking of like a gold AP or a gold Rolex today. Um, and plus it's still relatively thin and it could slide into un underneath a, a dress shirt if you want it to. Um, 
move you on to something that's completely on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, but also relatively made in, the, in around the same time is your transitional 5513. So this is, oh, out of the six years, seven years that we've been in business, we've never bought a spider dial watch. And um, I, I think th this is a very polarizing uh, watch. Some people love spider dials. Other people think, think of it as a broken dial or a broken watch. Um, I, think, I think I was in the, in the latter camp for the longest time because when I say spider dial, I mean the top lacquer of the gloss dial is spidering or you can see these veneer cracks um, that are just at the very surface level of the watch. Now typically, you're not gonna even be able to see them because the light has to just catch it just at the right angle for it to really show the spidering. And the reason why I never really got into these watches was because the spidering always seemed a little bit uneven or, I mean, you really can't control how these things, uh, you know, craze or, or crack. Um, but I never found one very attractive or had a pleasant enough uh, geometry to it where I wanted to stock. So when this one came up, uh, I was actually surprised uh, that I wanted it. I, I, I could not understand why. Um, but for whatever reason, the patina on the loom, the case condition, which we believe to be unpolished, um, the insert, everything just looks correct. And the spacing of the spidering seems very, very even, even though it's a random pattern. Uh, it's one of those, those cool things, especially with the plastic dome crystal, that makes us really love these transitional 5513s. Um, so moving forward, going on to a, a dated sub, we have a 16610, which I think you're gonna get a lot of polarizing uh, opinions on this watch as well. So this is, this watch seemed to have lived a very hard life. And I just mean that in a sense, in a silly sense that it's got a lot of heavy patina. It's uh, almost a pumpkin dark loom on the, the dial. Uh, there's some spotting effect on the, the actual black gloss of the, the dial. Uh, and the bezels turn more of a tropical hue. It's almost like this um, deep brown uh, tone to it, which even the pip matches the, the dial. Um, the case, I believe, has been uh, lightly touched up in the past, but it's nice and thick and even. Um, yeah, to find a 16610 that's kind of lived this kind of life uh, with this type of characteristic is very hard because typically on the newer subs, you're not gonna get as much character. You're not gonna get as much variation um, from your you know, early 60s um, late, uh, to late 70s subs. Um, but for whatever reason, this one is, I don't know. I might not even list this on a site. I think I'm gonna wear this for the rest of the summer. Uh, who knows? Um, but since we're on the topic of Sapphire Crystal Sport Rolexes, let's move on to the 16610. This we got in as a trade-in, and uh, it is just simply gorgeous. Uh, it's a Coke GMT Master II. Uh, I believe the original insert, it's in unpolished condition. If you look at the lugs closely, I mean, those bevels are super sharp. Um, this one is uh, a non-tritium dial, um, but it just still has that right look to it. I, uh, I'm beginning to more and more, uh, more and more understand why people love these transitional watches or, you know, early, uh, early 90s, late 80s uh, Rolexes, just simply because they're, they're such a good bargain for what you get. And this one, I believe, is from uh, 2000. So it's a little bit later, but man, it's got all the right characteristics. Before we move on to really, arguably, my favorite reference out of the vintage Rolex market, um, the 1675, we're going to talk about the 16750. And this slots in nicely because it's... It's one of those watches that have gone under the radar for quite some time. And um, for most collectors, I think when they think of vintage, they think of matte dial, plastic dome crystal. But man, I, I, I honestly feel I'm a little bit late to the game with some of these, you know, white gold surround uh, dials because 
I've always been such a purist with these matte dials, but if you're talking about watches that have a certain personality to them, you really can't just say, hey, I only want to collect this genre of watch. If a watch looks pleasing and looks uh, appealing, we're going to carry it and we're going to uh, chase after those watches. Um, so this 16750 has a blue black insert, white gold surround dial. Um, I want to say that this is from 1986, but I could be wrong. So don't quote me on that. Uh, the case is super nice. Everything's uh, nice and thick and even. Crown guards are nice and sharp. Um, and the loom on it is just one of those classic examples of uh, 16750. It's like the perfect shade of yellow um, so that everyone knows it's, it's a vintage Pepsi. Uh, there's no spidering, nothing on the dial. It's a nice white gold uh, surround dial. And uh, that's up on the site. So this is probably the reference I get the most questions about is the 1675 matte dial uh, GMT Pepsi. Um, one, because I think there's a lot of variation, dial variations. Um, really, it's Mark 1 through Mark 5. You're going to see some service dials pop up um, depending if the watch has been serviced and, and replaced. Uh, this one we've had for about a month, month and a half, and I don't know why it hasn't moved, but it's, right now it is my favorite uh, GMT in the mix. It is a Mark IV uh, GMT, and one of the ways you can tell the different variations of dials is, I guess um, you, you look for one thing that is the telltale characteristic of that, that Mark variant. So for the Mark IV, what I look for is, if you look at the crown, and you look at the negative space in between each of the, the little uh, points, the fourth negative space tends to be a little bit longer. So I just automatically think Mark IV when I think of that longer negative space that comes down. Um, it's really hard to describe, guys. And uh, I think when you see it and when you see it in person, it's way different than analyzing pictures online where you're like, well, is it, is it longer, is it not, etc. cetera. Um, what I love about this watch is it's priced, I think, well below market value. Um, but the insert on it, it's kind of got this orangish uh, faded uh, red hue that really brings out the color of the, the, the dial. And this is on the cusp of uh, a pumpkin dial. Um, matching hands, really hard to beat this. Um, but yeah, I certainly don't mind hanging on to it. The other two I have here are Mark II variants, and they couldn't look more different between the two. So we have a Mark II, and what characteristic I look for to determine whether it's a Mark II dial 1675 is, I simply look at the L in Rolex. And the L in Rolex, the vertical part of L should be thicker. So it's a chunkier kind of font than what the other uh, Mark variants of the 1675. But this one is just this vibrant, vibrant uh, 1675 uh, dial Mark II. And it's got a beautiful red back faded Pepsi insert. Um, it's also got a rivet, uh, I think it's a CNI bracelet that goes along with the, the watch. And if you want a classic looking Pepsi, I don't think you can beat something like this. Now the other one we just got in, I believe last week, this is the same variant dial, but it is a Mark, I'm sorry, it's a Mark II as well. But look at just how crazy the, the coloring is. It's way more saturated. This is in that pumpkin uh, spectrum. Uh, it's faded into a very light kind of champagne where the red used to go and uh, a little bit lighter blue up on top. Uh, it's been uh, refinished, uh, the case has been refinished uh, with excellent bevels, nice thick uh, crown guards, etc. It's on a Jubilee bracelet. And this is, for those pumpkin lovers, this is uh, hard to beat for a pumpkin GMT. So that is what is in stock right now. And I know I kind of got... Uh, a little bit long-winded with some of these uh, watches, but 
If you guys feel like you guys want a, a more in-depth uh, discussion on a specific type of variant, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you guys want to hear. But we'll be doing this every week and kind of going through what's in, in our inventory and why we're picking up the watches we're picking up. Uh, other than that, stay safe, guys. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.